We all love a redemption character. When her daddy comes home, that little girl used to be standing in front of a hero. One where they start off on a bad path. I you up here, man? You know me, I don't come nowhere just to talk. What are you saying, man? You're ready to go, yeah? But they learn lessons that help them change for the better and become a good person. <laughs> You're such a donut. If I want to talk, I'm here. And the tiger said, <laughs> <laughs> Sully, <laughs> Sully doesn't have one of those stories. <laughs> so you look at me wrong, you're done. I, mean, I swear to God, I'll fucking bury you. So I'll fucking kill you. I see Sully on the ends of his door, and I think, why does he get to live? And he called my brother. And he called your dad. What I'm asking for is a guarantee. The pass. Don't beg. It's disgusting. I lied to you. That's why you ain't getting no pass. Neither did Kira. I'm fucking sorry. You're the only one that bust my get it. Sorry, sorry. But he's a character who shows us more depth than just pure evil. But my mum, all she ever cared about was fucking junk. Sonny, where's Jason? We didn't make it. Jason! Jump! Jump! smoke. So my hands are in good, bro. We are not monsters with food. And I could never be food. All this noise is in my head. I just don't ever go away. Sully was raised in an area composed of poverty and crime. The East London streets littered with gangs constantly looking to recruit new members. And at home, Sully wasn't in the best environment. But my mum, all she ever cared about was f***ing junk. And exactly set you up for life a mum like that, does it? You gotta overcome all that. When raised in an environment like he was, you need guidance, which he was abandoned of. Most likely staying out of school, in need of money and no real family, Sully entered the street life, where he would really feel at home. Sully had become a drug dealer with his childhood friend Deshane, and the two of them worked their way up the ranks. Sully quickly became notorious for being the hot-headed one, capable of carrying out violence when he felt like it. I see you, man. Stay the f out of someone else listening. It started off with minor stabbings, cutting off fingers. It's the wrong finger. And he was clearly someone unafraid of violence. But Sully was yet to murder anyone. What are you saying, what? You're ready to kill yet? They war against another drug dealer, Kamali, who robbed them twice. And in an attempt to draw him out, they planned to kidnap his civilian cousin. I'm dead, bro. You killed him, blood. I can't believe this shit, you know. What do you think I meant that, bro? Sully's first ever murder. An accident that would change his psychology going forward. Once you do something you're scared to do, like skydiving or public speaking, your resistance towards it decreases. And of course, murder isn't anything like the prior activities, but Sully is amongst the first of many gang wars to come. And the only way he could become accustomed to the feeling of taking a life is by taking a life. They continue their pursuit on getting revenge on Kamali, and alongside their other close friend Driss, they find him, kidnap him, and force him to give up the location of their money. And once Kamali's no longer useful, Sully hands a gun to Driss, who ends his life. They retrieve the money, and whilst doing so, realize that a supposed ally, Lee Green, has been betraying them. Deshane pulls a gun, but when he becomes hesitant, Sully pushes him to shoot, before finishing him off himself with two more. The ability for Sully to kill in cold blood and to have little to no emotion when witnessing someone's life being taken shows us early signs of his desensitization to death, a trait meaning killing is less shocking to him in contrast to a normal person, a trait that would allow him to carry out his future actions. But how did Sully become capable of violence? I believe this is due to Sully's soldier identity. As mentioned, Sully came from what seems like a broken home and no real family around him. 
So when joining the gang young, he put his all into being a capable soldier and a drug dealer and he understood what that meant in the streets. You need to be capable of forgetting about morals and carry out violence when need be, whether it's retaliation, whether it's to send a message or whether it's to serve business. Sully had to accept that violence is a necessity and has adopted this trait fully. But this isn't without the help of deeper psychological issues that I'll discuss later on. An issue that persisted between Sully and Deshane was an understanding of the roles they play. Deshane always saw himself as the natural leader who understands business and is calm and calculated and he sees Sully's violent tendencies as his main asset, contributing by putting in more physical work two personalities that should complement each other in the drug game. However, Sully felt like Deshane saw him as an inferior and constantly reinforces the idea that they are equal partners. You can leave him, man. What? What are you saying? What? But why are you giving me orders? I ain't giving no orders. You just said leave him, no? <sighs> like, that sounds like an order, fam. Like, why are you giving me orders? Bro, I ain't giving you no orders. I just said we ain't got no time for this shit, bro. Therefore, whenever Deshane orders Sully to do something or comes up with plans, Sully is quick to shut it down and remind him. Because you always do it. I talk and you just do what you decided to do already. From school days, man. You always said us, but you meant me. You always said it was our crew, but it was always your crew. And any time you said it was our plan, it was always your plan. Yeah, I think you're reading that a bit wrong, cuz. It was always us. We were equal partners, bro. We were equal. We weren't partners. However, this blossoms an adverse quality in Sully's character. He's extremely stubborn, and if he believes something should be, then he makes it happen. A character named Renell, who wasn't a drug dealer, but got his hands on five keys of weed, made a deal with Deshane to sell it to him. But Sully wanted to oppose Deshane's plans. His stubbornness prevails, and he takes it into his own hands to rob Renell. However, when Renell's family friend Leon comes to protect him, Sully once more fails to control his violent tendencies. Yo, yo, get the f***ing bag! And this leads to the first major separation of Deshane and Sully. Wanted me to set you up because you're a liability, and you know what? I had the same idea. But you're my boy. I'm gonna do you now. No matter how stupid you are, things are gonna run differently around here. Understand? Their relationship would continue to rekindle when they need each other and end again when they fight. But the main discrepancy that would develop between Deshane and Sully is Deshane being someone who does whatever he can to win and Sully being a man that sticks to the code. Sully abides to the unwritten rules of the streets. No snitching, not letting anybody disrespect you and get away with it, minding your own business, accepting the consequences of your crimes, remaining loyal and many other traits I think you can get the idea of. This code, these unwritten rules become a part of Sully. They were ingrained within him. It's why he doesn't let things slide. It's why he's so assertive and that's why Deshane doesn't understand him. However, selling drugs and shooting for the sake of the gang is one thing, but kidnapping your own cousin and holding him hostage, now that's another level. Tell me something. When is it good manners to kidnap your own cousin? Hmm? When is it good manners to f***ing chain him to a radiator? F***ing beat the shit out of him, threaten to kill him? What? put a gun to his head, what is that good manners to your cousin is it? A bounty had been put on the head of Sully's cousin Jermaine and Sully saw this as an opportunity to exploit and make some money for himself. This reveals something else, Sully's character is self-centered. If he wants something to happen, he makes it happen as I said. And if he sees an opportunity to make some money, as long as he sticks to this code of his, then he doesn't care how it affects the other parties involved. You still going on about that? Hmm? Wrapped up is cool, isn't it? Gonna have to eat that one. This all then makes evident Sully's lack of empathy. He can murder and show no remorse. He can kidnap and torture his own family for money. He can rob a kid and shoot a civilian. And for Sully's story, this was only the start. Sully seemed to struggle to form strong, consistent bonds with those around him. 
appearing a man who lacks the ability to care for others and as seen with Deshane, he has a tendency to fall in and out of good relationships. In the first season of Top Boy, he has a kid with a woman named Taylor, little Natasha who he calls Tash, but that relationship also broke down. But an unlikely relationship developed between Sully and a young boy named Jason. Give me a pound. What? So give me a pound. Pound, sir. You f off. Who the f you talking to? Oi, 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 Mike. Oi, oi, Mike. Let him go, man. You know. He's a f businessman. Let him f it. Stop my phone, you know. What? Based on their first encounters, you wouldn't think Jason would amount to anything than just an annoying weird kid from the area. Get him. Oi! I got your phone, dickhead! However, in the midst of Sully holding Jermaine hostage, he gets Jason to bring him food, which Jason only accepts because he himself is hungry. Oh, so you have got my phone, you little fucker. Come in then. Come in then. You better my fucking change. You're lucky I don't shoot you dead, you know that? <laughs> What's on food, man? But once Jermaine's brother Ray finds out they were holding him hostage, he had to move. Jermaine! You there, bro? Shit! Throw me off, man! Sully! What are you doing? Your family, man! I so Sully and his counterpart Mike would have to leave with Jermaine and Jason and find somewhere else to hide him, and they chose Jason's place. And this is where Sully's intrigue in Jason began. I've got a life here. Yeah? Or just because I've got a boy, don't nah, I don't have a you life. Ain't got a Life and neither is he because of you. Oh, oh. Oh, damn, my house. Leave him, leave him. Remember how Sully's mother was also addicted to drugs? Well, Jason was in the same predicament. Sully would have likely experienced a level of neglect, a lack of support, and it very much could have created the heartless man who only fends for himself and craves that validation from Deshane. And in this moment, it becomes the first time Sully could ever experience empathy. By definition, empathy is the capacity to understand or feel what another person is experiencing from their frame of reference. That is, the capacity to place oneself in another's position. This feeling of empathy most likely felt foreign to Sully, but it did make him care for Jason and build resentment to how he'd been treated, resulting in him attacking Jason's mother's boyfriend. Yo, what? What? Hey, hey, listen. Hey, wait there, I'm coming. What the I'm not gonna tell you again, look after your fing boy! You alright, Jess? When Deshane and Sully carry out what they thought was their final task together, retrieving a stolen stash of drugs from the Albanians, Sully rejects Deshane's offer to continue working together and instead goes to look after Jason like a father figure and give him a better chance than he had. Sully finally has someone he genuinely cares about. Not for business or money, not for his own selfish needs, but purely to care for someone who he felt empathetic towards. Now this began to contrast what we thought about Sully. This emotionless monster who still did carry out the bad deeds, let's not forget, now shows he's more multidimensional than we would have first thought. Time goes by and Sully goes in and out of jail. During his time in there, we see him reinforce the cult by not tolerating the disrespect shown by Modi, who tries to bully Sully during his last days of prison. What are you doing? Why are you look like I'm oh, doing, come bro? Come on, man. man. Just relax. Do that side of it, Modi. Let me order. Oh, you're a bad boy now, Modi. Remember you're talking to you now? <laughs> John, show me your What Sully's response to this was boiling water over Modi's face. Hey! <laughs> Again, we see these malicious actions Sully is still able to carry out, despite it being many years later at this point. He gets released, and the first person he's greeted with out the prison gates is the now teenage Jason. To get back on his feet, the two of them head to a town called Ramsgate to sell drugs for a few days. Their time spent together further highlighted the positive dimensions of Sully's character. You know I've never even seen the sea before. Yeah, it's not really that much of a big deal. If you could do anything, have anything, what would it be? I want superpowers, just like Spider-Man. Fucking hell, you're mad. Not superpowers. Like, in the real world, like something you could really have. You know what? To go watch Arsenal play, because they're the best f***ing team in the whole Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> to 
can't watch Arsenal. Yeah. Ah, it's done. No. <laughs> yeah. Great. But there was a problem. Ramsgate is about two hours away from East London and it happens to be a lot less diverse and the home of some racist individuals. Oi! What? Where are you from? You foreign? Why are you no, talking bro, to him for? Lightning. What about your brown, mate? What are you doing here? We're on holiday, bro. Fucking awful. Not only were Sully and Jason different, but the house they were temporarily staying in was home to a foreign family. And one night, the racist did something that was extreme to demonstrate their hatred. With the loss of Jason, Sully had lost a connection that kept him grounded in peace. This wasn't the first time a friend of his had died in front of him, as a similar fate occurred for Mike. What the fuck? What? What the fuck are you gonna do with that? But this was one that cut much deeper, as Jason was basically Sully's family. He ended up rekindling his partnership with Deshane as he knew nothing else. What else is there? He also thought the game would allow a distraction from dealing with the grief, but the money couldn't take away the trauma. It's fucking smoke. So my hands are in good, bro. Money, bro. Do something with that. Enjoy it. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you, man. He felt he needed to get rid of it somehow, and he heads back to Ramsgate to deal with things the only way he knows how. Oi! Oh. 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 Remember this brown face? You oh. oh. killed my friend. Oh. 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 With the absence of Jason, his bond with his daughter Tash was given a chance to develop. The tiger who came to tea. What's that about? The tiger who came to tea. Makes sense. The day of Jason's cremation came, and Sully was the only one that attended. Jason's mum had died while Sully was in prison, and no one else was really close to him. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna cook it. What are you gonna make? I'm gonna make lobster. It's a crab. You know what? To go watch Arsenal play. Cause they're the best fing team in the whole Premier League. Sorry. But as he tried to leave, his enemies caught him lacking. This furthered an already tense war between them and the ZTs, consisting of their leader Jamie, 
who will be a prominent character later, has Sully wanted revenge. Oh, where the f*** have you been, man? Oh my god, that man just had a f***ing pop at me, you know? Who? That late on you. Fields must have fired about 20 times. Nah, man, I thought that Jamie you was smarter than that. Why are you as angry as that? That's what I want to know. Man f***ing bust shots at you, and I know about it. It's f***ing mad. Bro, have you I'm riding that immediately. Why don't you f***ing care? I do care. He started this war, innit? And I'm gonna have to finish it. Despite being in shock from nearly losing his life, we once more bring back the code that he lives by, one that requires retaliation when violated. So he rounded up some guys and went lurking, but Jamie and the ZTs were out too. He fails, and one of his soldiers gets killed in front of him again. The war goes back and forth for a while, but eventually Deshane defeats Jamie and the ZTs by using police to snitch on Jamie for drugs and guns that he had planted in his house. But once more, this goes completely against Sully's code and proves the difference between Sully and Deshane. You said there's always a way in it. That's what you said to me, bruv. There's always a way. I know that way. But there was one issue that had to be dealt with. Remember Driss, the same one who Sully made finish off Kamali? Well, he was still part of Summer House all those years later and sided with Deshane and Sully against the ZTs. At least, that's what they thought. They figured out and proved that Driss was actually feeding information to the ZTs and had aided them in almost dying. Sully throughout the years had a brotherly love for Driss, but the code Sully lives by would have no other solution other than taking his own friend's life. Driss, we can do it here, but Aaron's gonna find you. Put some shoes on. Why? If you're gonna do it, do it fam. Although Driss was a traitor and could have contributed to Sully's death, he still feels guilty and slightly traumatized killing one of his closest accomplices but it had to be done. At this point, Sully went through some sort of psychological crisis. Whilst Deshane kept on drug dealing and building up his empire, with Jamie working for him and no enemies to deal with, Sully retired from the game and went to live on a boat away from the streets to clear his mind. Why did you decide to live on the canal? When I came home, so things went down. And, um, I just need to get away from that shit. His neighboring boat owner, Delphine, was a character who had also experienced trauma in her life, losing her four year old son in an accident. And she was able to unravel and pull back the layers of Sully's rough exterior to reveal his human side. It's like all this noise is in my head. And just don't ever go away. We really see now that Sully is capable of being a regular functioning guy and isn't just a killer. And perhaps if he stayed away from any street activity, his mind would eventually detach from it and his journey of healing would continue. But he had a duty call from his niece. Now Cypress and Kadiva onto me differently. Of course. Now nah, you don't know. They've been calling me, texting me, telling me what they're gonna do when they find me. Will you chat to them for me? No, chat to them and say what? I respect you, innit? You can tell them I got exploited and- Don't go like that. The man ain't gonna give a f I know, I've been them. They're gonna want their shit back. Sully is at the heart a family man, willing to do what's necessary to save his family from danger. So he tries to sort out the situation for Pebbles. Instead, she bounces with my money and the drugs come on, brother. My dick. Are you? She made a mistake. I'm just here to fix it. No, what she done was a disrespect, blood. Nah, that's gotta get compensated still. Well, it ain't gonna be compensated, is it? There ain't gonna be no compensation. No. Well, you taking this for some cartoon thing, fam? Ah, so what are you saying then? Ah, fuck! Fuck! Oh, shit! What's wrong with a silly boy? No, you man sleep on it. As we can see, this reformed, more grounded Sully actually tries to negotiate in a peaceful manner, completely contrasting the old version that would have been so much more aggressive. He had turned a new leaf, and although he pulled his gun for self-protection, he never intended on using it. He was trying to see if a solution could be accomplished without violence. But Sully's generosity isn't respected, 
and the guys return after the Pebbles stupidly tries to make a deal with them and gave up his location and he's kidnapped, beaten badly and held hostage until he gave up the location of the stolen drugs. Shane and the other summer house members find out and rescue their boy. What are you doing here, man? Get me up. Sorry, bro. And although the captors have been killed in the process of rescue, this was the turning point for Sully. Before he helped Pebbles, he said an important line. You're really dragging me back now. You're fing killing me here, man. Before the situation, he was recovering mentally and distancing himself from that life and he knew that getting involved in something like this posed a risk to his recovery. But protecting family is something Sully stands for, so he did. And now, <laughs> now he had realized that playing the nice guy, being respectful, not escalating to violence, got him nowhere. In fact, it got him disrespected, beat down, almost killed and humiliated. And this was when the inevitable monster was reborn. All of his mental progress had now been undone. He rejoined Deshane and started working on the roads once more. Jamie, who as mentioned was now working for Deshane, had been sent to Morocco to sort out an issue with the Connect. And just to make sure things were done right, Deshane sent Sully out there. And this revealed the extreme tension that existed between the two of them. You look at me wrong, you're done. Jamie, I swear to God, I'll f***ing bury you out here. Because Jamie was now working for Deshane, it's easy for him and even the viewers to forget what had occurred between Sully and Jamie prior. But a man like Sully, <laughs> how could he forget? Leighton shot the bullets at Sully, yes, but Leighton is part of the same gang as Jamie. In fact, Jamie is the leader of the said gang, so Sully doesn't care about who the bullets came from. Jamie is guilty by association. Then Jamie actually shot at Sully at the petrol station and killed his boy in front of him. Then, Deshane and Sully set up a test to find out if Driss was the snake and pretended to be at a calf to see if Jamie and his gang would pull up. And they did, with the intent to kill Sully and Deshane. So for someone like Deshane whose priority is succeeding in business, he could let bygones be bygones and move past it as the tables have turned. But Sully's priority is the code, and Jamie had little room for error around him. There was a corrupt Spanish fed, Juan El Bueno, who for a price would allow some drug packages to be transported through his territory without it being seized as well as offering some protection. However, the price he was charging for them was way too high. Jamie had accepted the deal anyway, as he had set up side plans with Juan to start supplying him separately after Deshane and Sully's time was done. You get the dookies to supply with everything that I need in London. Like I said before, no wars, just money, straight business. So Sully decided, why not just kill Juan, as they don't have to pay the money? So disguising the gun under a box of savory treats for Juan, Sully planned the murder. But before he did, Juan exposed Jamie's plans. You are very quiet tonight. Last time you had plenty to say for yourself. Big talk, big plans. Sully shoots Juan and his guards. Mira lo que tenemos aquí. Yo, what the fuck he did? <laughs> then confronts Jamie about his big plans. Big f***ing plans, yeah? But what are you talking about? Hmm? You think I don't know? No what? You and Juan cozying up? Bro, you think I could cozy up with a fed? Back in London, he collects his things from his boat to move out. But before he goes, he romantically kisses Delphine, who is also moving away. And this almost symbolises that he is kissing goodbye to the peaceful retired version we were starting to see. After all their problems were dealt with, Deshane lets Sully know his plans with Jamie. You see, whatever the beef is between you two, I do believe is Jamie is our f***ing retirement plan, bro. But Sully wasn't listening. He'd made up his mind with Jamie. See, what most people don't understand is that to Sully, it was 100% clear with Jamie making those plans with Juan that he would wait for the perfect time to become top boy again. Characters like Jamie are called big dreamers and will never be satisfied with being some middleman soldier. The shame may have been smart, but money blinded him from the truth of the streets. Sully knew this and did what was necessary. On the road. Step off the f***ing road when I'm gonna you f***ing step back now. When I say you step back. After everything, after all the trauma, the retirement, the indecisiveness, 
Psycho Sully was back. Time passed and Sully was the leader of Summer House whilst the Shane stepped back. But we need to understand why Sully wanted this. Remember, this is the dark psychology of Sully, so we need to enter his mind for a moment. Firstly, he had constantly reinforced that he wanted him and the Shane to be equal partners and that the Shane wasn't his superior. Sit down, bro. But you might be old chapel in your own head, but you ain't to me. You're lucky I'm here, don't push it. But despite this, Things never actually felt that way. It never felt to him as people view him how they view the Shane. The Shane was the boss with the business mind and Sully was the psycho with the trigger finger. Now that the Shane had mentioned retirement to Sully, he saw this as an opportunity to finally exceed that secondary position. This is why the Shane says, I'm planning this shit. Finally your time now, innit? It's what we wanted all along to see us on the Big man Sully. Secondly, when someone joins the road, street life. Do you know what their predominant desire is? It's power. The power of being feared, the power of having money, the power of being respected. And just like with most things in life, the more you get, the more you want. And Sully is no exception. He's someone who never wants to answer to anyone. He doesn't want a boss ordering him to do things, whether that be the Shane or anyone else. He wants to do what he pleases. Thirdly, because of the neglect from his mother, he wanted that validation from Deshane as being respected as an equal, and he never got that. But now was his time to prove he was as worthy as Deshane. I believe it was a combination of these feelings that pushed Sully to take both Jamie and Deshane out of the equation. As an apology from Pebbles for the trouble she caused, she sorted out a deal with Tash's mother that Sully could see her more often, which you would think gives Sully a chance to tap into his human side every once in a while. But his relationship with his daughter has little to no meaning to Sully's level of psychopathy. You've surely heard of the Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar, right? To aid his ordeals, he contributed to killing somewhere in the ballpark of 4,000 to 5,000 people. A monster, but one that still loved his children. Years after his death, his son had acknowledged he inflicted terrible suffering on so many people, but he also stated that he was an excellent father. El Chapo, another infamous cartel leader, once told an investigator he had killed 2,000 to 3,000 people. This same man's wife has publicly spoken about his extreme love for his daughters. You can see the point I'm trying to make. Someone can be a psychopathic killer and still love their children, and Sully's relationship with Tash is, by all means, another case of this. You may have noticed I keep referring to Sully as psycho or psychopathic during this video. However, before we carry on with the story, which is far from finished, I need to clarify what this monster truly is, or more importantly, what he's become. Evident by his lack of empathy and his ability to be violent with no remorse, very much leads to a verdict of ASPD, or as what generally gets referred to as psychopaths or sociopaths. So what are they, and which one is Sully? Well, they both fall under a similar psychopathy umbrella, and when looking at a violent individual, this is the typical accusation given towards them. Psychopaths lack a conscience and don't feel empathy for others. They may pretend to care, but often maintain a normal facade to cover up cold-hearted or even criminal behaviours. Sociopaths may experience limited empathy and remorse for their actions. They struggle to maintain normal behaviours and routines and can be impulsive and overly emotional. A sociopath may recognise that their actions are wrong but find ways to rationalise their impulsive and harmful behaviours. Of course, there can be some overlap with these conditions and Sully's traits can be spotted in both. But from a deep analytical point of view, Sully does seem to correlate more with a sociopath. We've discussed empathy a few times in this video and despite Sully being a cold killer, there are times where he has been empathetic, clearly with Jason as we mentioned, but also with Driss. Sully really didn't want to kill Driss. The same way I don't think he actually wants to kill anybody, he is not sadistic, but he religiously abides by the rules of the game and murders who he feels deserves it, allowing him to rationalise it. But with Driss, he was incredibly hesitant to shoot, and following the shooting we see him riddled with guilt, showing cold heartedness and empathy can both coexist in a character like Sully. Struggling to maintain normal behaviours and routines is also a big one that separates Sully from being distinguished as a psychopath or a sociopath. Psychopaths are known to be able to hold down jobs, even well respected high paying jobs, and blend into society whilst committing the bad deeds in private. However, Sully and Deshane had conversated about how Sully is the opposite of this. You said it yourself, this is you and me. This is us. we are gonna be no cosy 9 to 5 or no fuck. Nice little house with a picket fence and all of that comfortable shit, brother. It ain't happening. I'm telling you. 
We can't see him in the office now. No. <laughs> Unless you're fing sticking it up. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Sully's mind is so invested by the streets that he couldn't hold down a normal 9 to 5 if he tried. Sociopaths, as mentioned, are more impulsive and emotional, when on the contrary, psychopaths are more of the cold and calculated type. When we look at him stabbing Kamali, pushing Deshane to shoot Lee Green, shooting Leon, even killing Jamie, it was all emotional. There were a few times where he was calculated, like the actual manipulation of Juan El Bueno before shooting him, but the majority of his violent acts are emotional. I think Sully understands killing is wrong in the grand scheme of things, but he's definitely able to use justification to rationalise what he does. To Sully, he doesn't really understand the normal world. The streets are all he knows, and therefore the street code is all he lives by. And he knows damn well that it involves violence and killing. You were right. You can't run this shit without the bodies. Therefore, when he kills, he justifies it by believing he is staying loyal to the rules of the streets and that everyone who he kills deserves it. But just because this is how he sees things, and maybe I might have helped you understand him more, he is still incredibly sick in the head. Murder is rarely ever justifiable, and Sully always had a choice. He is, in my opinion, a sociopath, and as we continue with his story, maybe it can help at least make sense of his choices and behaviours during his time as the newly crowned top boy. Sully would now finally get his taste of what it's like to be at the top of the hierarchy. Deshane, whether Sully wanted to admit it or not, had always taken on that responsibility, but now it was Sully's time. Would this sociopath be able to deal with the obstacles and challenges that come with being the king? Uh, who are you? I appreciate the call, Sully, and I just want to make it 100% crystal clear. Just so there's no chance of any misunderstanding, alright? The last thing I want to do is start any trouble. I have a proposal, and when you hear it, I think you're gonna like it. I ain't gonna like it. Make this f***ing heads in boxes. That ain't a proposal, is it? He first had to deal with supply issues. Before Sully took over, the shame was getting his drug supply from the Moroccans. But early into Sully's reign, they were killed by the Irish, who were now forcing Sully to work with them using threats of violence. I mean, it's 50% of a whole lot of money. Or 100% of a whole lot of money. Or, you know what? Maybe I send you ahead to Tasha's mother's house. Got your attention now, don't they? This was almost a test of Sully's gangster, when under pressure from a seemingly more dangerous opponent, how would he overcome it? From a mental standpoint, he couldn't just be the psychotic bully, as Johnny's threats have actually made him fearful. And once again, the bipolar relationship of Deshane and Sully gets rekindled as they plan to plot against the Irish. They sneak into Johnny's great uncle's birthday party and murder both Johnny and his uncle Toig. See she is, buddy. <laughs> This plan approves Sully is also capable of being a cold and calculated killer when the time requires, as it involved him listening to Johnny talking about the party, paying one of the staff to turn off the CCTV, going in through the back entrance and waiting for Johnny to arrive. More blood was now on Sully's hands, but he would have just justified this one with self-defense, as they made threats using his daughter's name. But when it seemed like Sully had lost all emotion, he consoles Jack, his second in command, who had just lost her sister Lauren to a drug-related death. I love to see that. If we want to talk, I'm here. This relates back to me labelling him as a sociopath, as he can in some instances be genuinely empathetic. And we know here he is predominantly referring to Jason, and he makes Jack know he understands how it feels to lose someone close. But what I find most interesting here is his self-awareness. Know what you're on. But that road don't end good. It don't make you feel better. I thought you f said you was here to help yeah, me. Yeah, 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 but it's Look at me. Don't be me. There's some psycho individuals out there that really don't realise the monsters they are. Or if they do, they don't see it as a bad thing. Sully is aware that his grief caused him to go further downhill. And perhaps now he's just going through the motions with little remorse for anyone in the way. But he doesn't condone Jack going down a similar path. Sully gets back to business and gets the drugs moving again. But not before another issue arises. Sully never said nothing about moving this. Oh, fucking bags! Yeah, I'm sorry. Shut up! Jack had experienced an epiphany in her drug dealing ordeals after Lauren's death. It's too late for Lauren. But it ain't too late for her baby. 
It's too late to save Lauren, but it ain't too late to save my nephew. Lauren had a newborn son, who was now left to Jack and her girlfriend Bex to look after. And in realising that they were going to grow up in an area polluted with drugs and bad influences, she knew changes had to be made. The bags Jack had taken had around half a mil worth of drugs inside, so if she was able to sell it, she would be able to move out the ends and build a new life with the baby. When Sully found out the drugs were gone, he went on a warpath to find them. But Kieran, Jack's friend who was loyal to her, made up a lie that Sai, one of Jamie's friends, had something to do with it, and Sully violated him to get the answers. Shut up, man. So I'll f***ing kill you. <laughs> but Sai genuinely knew nothing, and it didn't take too long after this for Sully to realise it was Jack. At this point in time, knowing everything Sully had done, and the fact he's a sociopathic killer, and stays low to his code, Jack had signed her death sentence with the Grim Reaper. Realising she didn't want to be on the run, she instead tried to reason with Sully, thinking her generosity of giving the drugs back would be appreciated. But Sully's code doesn't work like that. But all I'm asking for is a guarantee. A pass. Huh. Because I don't trust you, brother. This then leads to perhaps Sully's saddest execution. You f***ing lied to me. Just tell me you lied to me. Tell me you f***ing lied to me. I'm scared, I'm sorry. You're gonna lie, lie like a f***ing man. Say it! Another young life taken at the hands of Sully for lying to him. The fear in Kieran here is telling. It's the same fear that the ZTs had when Sai was getting violated and none of them helped him. It's the same fear Jack had when asking to be spared. Sully's leadership style is fear based. Although he's running the organisation now, it wasn't his business mind or his intelligence that made everyone accept him as their new leader. Everyone is just scared of Sully, as they know he's a loose cannon who will murder without remorse. And Sully knows this, and he uses this complex to keep everyone obedient, taking advantage of his cold-blooded nature. He then expected Jack to hand over the drugs, but for her own safety, she had to let Deshane know that she was giving the drugs back to Sully. What she didn't know is that Deshane was now broke, on the run from police, and in need of 250k to flee the country with a new identity. So, at the drop-off, Deshane robs Jack, and Sully tells her that she's going to die for this, just like Kieran did. That's why you ain't getting no pass. Neither did Kieran. After a long chase and a couple more deaths along the way, the two top boys were left. You robbed me! And then they got into a conversation that could summarize Sully's whole mind, his psychological basis, in one interchange of dialogue. You just couldn't handle that I was the big brother. Wait, how about see me on a level? <laughs> how about I just wanted your respect? How about that? What Sully really craved was to finally feel that superiority after feeling inferior to Deshane this whole time, practically begging at times to be seen as a 50-50 partner, and in the end, he had to run things himself to finally get that feeling. And here he openly admits he just wanted the respect. I do respect you, fam. You were right. You can't run this shit without the bodies. This clarifies that Sully had at some point in the past told Deshane that murdering is just a cost of being at the top of the streets. It's a philosophy and a mindset that allows sociopaths like Sully and Deshane to justify why they've killed the people they've killed and to minimise the traumatic feeling of taking a life. Look at where we're from. We are not monsters with food. And I could never be food. Arguably one of the most important lines that Sully says that gives us an insight into his mind. When people come from the ghetto and enter the street life, they either survive by being killers and in Sully's word, monsters, or if you aren't capable of being a killer, then the quicker you end up dead yourself. When mentioning food, he's talking about being a victim. Sully knows that the inevitable ending of being in this life is death, but the more enemies you're able to take out, the longer you can postpone it. And this means you have to be cautious, but more importantly, 
you have to be violent and Sully has taken so many lives to avoid being a victim himself. So I do think we survived all this time. We see a tear streaming down the face of Sully and there's no way to know exactly what he's thinking that's making him tear up but I believe that just for this tiny period, even if just for a couple minutes, he's actually feeling pity for himself. All of this killing and now fatally shooting his childhood brother just for a couple bags of drugs, just for some ghetto kids in the area to respect him as a leader, just for some temporary power and a path that leads to prison or the grave anyway, just because he abides by this code that was made up and passed down by someone who probably ended up with a violent end themselves and pointing out that it has something to do with where he's from allows him to believe this was the only path he could have taken. For the minutes that preceded, he tried to convince himself that his shot on the shame wasn't fatal and that over the wall he was still alive. But after getting no reply, he jumps over and realises what's happened. He takes it in and stays with Deshane until his last breath before retrieving the bags and leaving Deshane to rot. The next day he walks with his daughter to school but his vibe is off. You know I love you right? Yeah. But you know. Are you alright? So I worry about you a lot you know. I might not be around for a little bit but we'll speak. Okay good. Him telling Tash, you know I love you and I might not be around for a while and his overall different energy in my opinion was almost a post shock feeling of the prior days. Bear in mind in the span of about a week, Sully had killed Johnny, Tyg, Kieran, one of the Shane's drivers and the Shane himself and now it was all over, he knows that it won't be long until his time is up. He had too many enemies and his fate remained in question. Not long after departing from Tash, he's met with a similar face. Okay. What you had to see that day was top. But it had to be done. It's like you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm okay with it. We see Sully accept his death. He accepted his fate that he had killed Jamie for reasons he believed were justified, and now Steph had come to avenge his brother, which he actually seemed to respect Steph for. That acknowledging Steph's gotta do what he's gotta do. How does it feel? To be honest, Steph, man, he done left me a long time ago. He admits the feeling had left him, and I truly believe killing the shame was the end game for Sully. All of his complex PTSD and trauma, his guilt, and just all of his violent acts had reached his peak when he killed someone he's partnered with since they were little. But he spared. Steph had a change of heart despite Sully accepting his fate in that moment. What makes this moment even deeper? is that Sully walks to his car and chuckles to himself whilst revealing he had a gun in his pocket the whole time. Being as experienced as he is, he could have easily pulled a quick draw on Steph and shot him first, 100%. Or even as Steph turned around, he could have ended him there to make sure that he wouldn't change his mind again in the future. But he was genuinely okay with dying. He was empty inside. He prepares to drive off with the drugs still to hand, but his violent acts come full circle. This isn't a top boy ending explained or who killed Sully video so I'm not going to sit here convincing you of who the killer was. We see them for less than a second walking off and by naked eye analysis just based on the attire and the movement of the character I'm 99% certain it was Jack who killed Sully because he'd basically told her her time was up and she was going to be killed by him and she had a duty to protect Lauren's child so she wasn't really left much choice. But regardless the show conceals the killer's identity to highlight something else. Sully had committed so much violence, ruined and taken the lives of many and he had made a large amount of enemies along the way. Even though we as viewers see Jack or the figure walking off, Sully didn't see a thing before his brains were blown out. But to be honest, this sociopath was as empty inside when he was alive as he is with his head blown off. If he didn't get killed then, he would have got killed sooner or later by another one of his enemies. His life was troubled, his mind riddled with trauma and evil and regardless of how much I actually liked his character at the time, his end was a just one. Wonder why she hit me up Said she got in touch because the vibes we have are similar So naturally I give a fuck Decide to map it out and let my actions do the talking Got no time to mess about but then she changed the way she spoke Not the same approach Talking about she doesn't want to shadow my shine She wants a name alone And even if we were then it might change the way they play her songs I'm reasoning